This is for Austin Witsit and Jaron Campanella, as a gift, and something to think about. Austin and Jaron believe that the Earth is flat, or so they claim. One of their proofs is that Pic du Canigou in the Pyrenees in France can be seen on multiple occasions from the slopes of the Alps, and according to the globe, the peak of the mountain should be 1161 feet behind the curve. That's at least what Jaron stated in one of his videos, and he repeated that during a debate with Will Duffy. Yet we can see the mountain, thus the curve doesn't exist, thus the earth is flat. Again, that's at least what I get from their argument. Jaron used the earth curve calculator that assumes that light travels in straight lines from the object to the observer. Look, it's right in the notes here. Meaning, no refraction, no optical illusions, no atmospheric lensing, no nothing. Plain, simple and beautiful perspective on a globe. So clearly, Jaron and Witsit tested an airless globe, saw that it was faulty and concluded that the Earth is flat. Let's ignore the fallacy hidden in there. Because did they test an airless flat Earth, or any flat Earth for that matter, or did they just say that the strawman version of the globe model is wrong, so therefore they are right? Now, I haven't seen them verify the observation on a flat earth. In fact, I haven't seen any flat earther ever do that. So I will. If the earth is flat, then mean sea level is also flat. All elevation data, the data that describes how high or tall the terrain of the earth is, can then be added on this mean sea level base and we get ourselves a model of the terrain of flat Earth. For Pic du Canigou, for example, we simply take a zero elevation base plane and we add the height for every square meter. We can look at it from different angles and this is what we expect the mountain to look like if the Earth was actually flat. What we can do now is test this model under the same assumptions that Jaron and Witsit used to test the globe. Light traveling in straight lines, no optical illusions, pure and simple perspective. I could do this in Blender, but there is in fact a free and easy to use online tool that you can easily access without any download and where you can simply fill in some values. This will render a flat earth with all the terrain features from a vantage point that you can choose. Really easy. Let me show you. Step 1. Go to udeutschel.de and set it to English. Note that the values are all in degrees, meters and kilometers, so a little conversion is needed to adjust yourself to the global standards. Step 2. Use the map or the coordinates to input the observer's position. For our example of Pic du Canigou from Marseille, we first need to figure out who made the observation or at least where it was taken from. In a mirror of Jaron's video, where he laid out his claim, we learn that the observation was done by Roger Bus and that it was narrated by Alain Oringer. On Alain's YouTube page, by the way, we see a lot of these observations, all done from different locations. I assume that, since the sun doesn't always set in the same direction, you need to change the observer's location so that the sunset again aligns with the peak. But let's stick with Jaron's choice here, where Roger and Alain were in Alaug. Jaron claims an observation spot below 1000 feet and a distance of 163 miles. If I google Pic du Canigou from Alaug, click the video that Jaron used and read the description, I find a link to an article. And in this article, we learn that the observation was done at Notre Dame du Chateau in Alaug, at an elevation of 310 meters or 1017 feet. To my knowledge, that is more and not less than a thousand feet. But I guess that this minor mistake will not change the outcome that much. So we have ourselves an observation spot. The way that I prefer to input this is to go to Google Earth first and pinpoint an exact location. We can then copy the coordinates and fill these in in latitude and longitude. Use the map to perfect the observation's location. Make sure that this box is not ticked, so that the location you put in is the exact spot that you Deutschl will use. Otherwise, it will look for hills and peaks in the neighborhood and potentially teleport the viewer to a nearby highest point. We can now add some meters for the camera, so let's be fair and input 2 meters for the wall here. In the range of sight box, we fill in 750, that's kilometers, since that is the max that the software is going to allow. 
and we add underscore RC1. This little extra will tell the program it needs to assume that mean sea level is flat and that no refraction is added onto that flat earth. Finally, we need to set up the direction we are looking into. Kanigu is part of this grey oval shaped mountain range here, so you simply click the middle line once and click again to drop it. Set the horizontal extension to about 5 degrees. Leave altitude and tilt to auto for now. Give the project a name and then finally click show the panorama. A new tab in your browser will be opened. It will take some time to render your panorama, but eventually, voila, the flat earth prediction is produced. Now compare with the observation and start realizing it's a bad idea to bring up Pic du Canigou to debate in favor of a flat earth. It kind of shows that a flat earth under the assumption that light travels in straight lines is not really matching reality. You can see that the location here corresponds with the 308 meter terrain, further confirming that the location was indeed at Notre Dame du Chateau. What we are looking at right now is an earth where mean sea level is flat and where light travels in straight lines. Pic du Canigou is somewhere over here, by the way, and if you like to remove the labels, you add underscore no labels in the range of sidebox too. Very handy. You can still hover your mouse over the terrain and it will pop up some names, heights and distance. So on one hand we have an airless globe that doesn't predict the view, and on the other hand we have an airless flat earth that fails too. And what I like to know is which model fails the most, or in opposite words, which description of our planet fits reality the best. Judeutschel allows you to move from a flat earth to a globe using 100 steps. Here I downloaded all the 101 steps ranging from RC1 to RC0 with increments of 0.01. RC stands for refraction coefficient and what it does is it curves mean sea level from a flat surface to a globe with eventually a radius of 6371 kilometers. It uses the term refraction coefficient because that's one way of describing the amount of refraction on a globe. But as you just saw, it doesn't mean that the Earth needs to be a globe to work. We can perfectly use it for a flat Earth prediction too. If the Earth is a globe, but light bends at the same rate as the Earth, so the famous 8 inches, the Earth will appear perfectly flat. That is where the 1 comes from. It compares the bending of the light with 8 inches per mile squared. On the other hand, if the Earth is flat, but light bends up by 8 inches per mile squared, it will appear as a globe. If an observation done in reality leans more to an airless flat earth, it means that the globe needs a lot of downwards refraction. But if the observation looks more like an airless globe, flat earth needs more refraction and upwards. So what is it? Does the observation fit the globe or a flat earth better? Let's compare our observation with these 101 predictions ranging from a globe to a flat earth and see which fits best. Note that RC0, an airless globe, does indeed hide the entirety of the Pyrenees behind the horizon, as predicted by Jaren. But when we go back and forth, we eventually can settle on RC0.18, way closer to the globe prediction than to the flat earth prediction. It actually ended very close to what all geodetic surveyors know and use. That light bends down by a gentle 1.4 cm per km squared on a globe with a radius of 6371 km. It turns out that Pic du Canigou is supposed to be seen on the globe. Not the straw man globe that this calculator uses here, the actual globe that so many of us believe in. The globe with an atmosphere. If the Earth on the other hand is flat and mean sea level is flat, then light needs to refract upwards by about 6.666 cm per km squared. Means that a flat earth is the work of the devil and that Jaron is probably a demon and that Witsit is Satan himself, the master of eloquence, weaving his words like a sinister symphony, each syllable dripping with honeyed malevolence. No, <clears throat> sorry. This upwards refraction that is needed on a flat earth is rather inconvenient. Our atmosphere has a density gradient. More dense closer to the ground, less dense higher up. And light tends to refract from the less dense medium into the more dense medium. This means light refracts down in our atmosphere in general. 
During the debate between Will Duffy and Austin Witsit, Jaron tried to bring up some calculations, and although Will didn't want to say anything about the observations and the calculations and steered the conversation away from the numbers, we have the values that Jaron wanted to discuss on screen. We see him claim an observer's height of a thousand feet, probably coming from his earlier research on the topic, but also a distance of 175 miles, or 282 kilometers. But his earlier video said 163 miles, and the website states 263 kilometers, which is the same. So the numbers that Jaron was going to show us are not the same as this separate video that he made on the topic earlier. And fair enough, the video that he was playing during the debate was actually from a different location. Let's have a look. If I click Akai here, which is like home, we recognize the thumbnail with the same beautiful wavy clouds. It states the 4th of February 2011 from Bonsuit la redonne close to Marseille. In the English description, we learn a distance of 253 kilometers or 157 miles. So to give Jaron the benefit of the doubt here, we can say he could have made a typo when copying this value, 175 instead of 157 miles. There isn't an observer's height given here, but yet Jaron claims a thousand feet. So it looks like he was a bit sloppy overall here in filling in these values. Yet he was probably going to draw a very drastic conclusion from this. But I think that we can fix that. On that website there, there is a page that shows the predictions for an alignment with the sunset. And for the 4th of January, La Redonne is mentioned, just like the video did. It states a cross point with Rue de Niolon. The coordinates take us indeed to a lovely spot where we have a small vista on the Mediterranean Sea. And placing this spot in you, Deutschel, tells us that we are expecting a nice view on those mountains. And the best fit is around RC 0.16, meaning a flat earth needs about five and a quarter times more refraction. And to just repeat it one more time, this refraction needs to be upwards against the measured density gradient in our atmosphere. We also learn that the observer's height is around 280 meters or 715 feet. Not a thousand feet, but we also learn that the distance to the mountain is 244 kilometers and not 252, like the video states. So I forgive Jaron for being confused. And I still wonder what Austin and Jaron think of the fact that Flat Earth needs about five times more refraction and upwards in a very rare and unstable situation. And if I may, I'd like to conclude with Witsit's own words addressing such a unique and peculiar situation. You can go down on a predicted day because of where the sun sets physically in reality. Look at that mountain. We see, we know exactly what the math is. So coincidentally, the refraction always happens on the day that the sun sets right behind the mountain to give us the silhouette. We can indeed calculate where on Earth there is an alignment between a sunset and Pic du Canigou. And according to this list here, there are many opportunities for some great sightings. Meaning that every single time that Alain or Roger or any of these other photographers that I have been speaking with, like Bruno Carias or Marc Brett, went up the hills and saw the silhouette of Canigou, almost entirely obscured by the horizon, Flat Earth requires extreme, or dare I say magical conditions, and consistently, as Austin hinted at. But I was wondering, which calculations is Austin actually talking about here? The Flat Earth or the Globe Earth predictions? Because from my chat with Bruno and Mark, I learned that they use Peak Finder for their planning. Peak Finder, which uses the globe to predict an alignment, not a Flat Earth. Heck, if the Earth is flat, we don't even expect the sunset to happen in the first place. And why didn't the sun shrink during its descent? Yep, I agree, it is rather magical. Now, if you are interested to learn more about the mathematical equations that Austin is referring to, or how much mountain we see in the video, I am working on a collaboration right now, and I don't know when it will be finished, but for now, just stay MC tuned for that, alright? And let's take care, my fellow apes. Bye bye.